Hi folks, Dane here, and today I've got a very special unboxing, assuming this parcel is what I think it is. But I think it is what I think it is. So come with me while we investigate and see what's so special about this package. It is what I think it is. Oh, this is exciting. So this is a book by someone you may or may not have heard of. This is the advanced proof copy, only one of these exists in the world, of Driven by Dane Cobain. So this is Lightfold Book 1. It's the first book in my new detective novel series. And I must say, actually holding this in my hands, I'm quite happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. So there's your front cover. There's your rear cover. Let me read the blurb. I mean, I've got to pimp this thing now, haven't I? Meet private detective James Lightfold, computer whiz kid Miley O'Hara, and good-natured cop Jack Chumley in the first book of the Lightfold series. A car strikes in the middle of the night and a young actress lies dead in the road. The police force thinks it's an accident, but Miley and Lightfold aren't so sure. Putting their differences aside and brought together by a shared love of crosswords and busting bad guys, Miley and Lightfold investigate. But not all is as it seems, as they soon find out to their peril. Oh god, it's so exciting. Driven by Dane Cobain. I guess I'll tell you a little bit about my publishing process. So I am a self-published author. I have previously been published by indie presses. I've got a book out called No Rest for the Wicked through a press called Dragon Moon Press. But to be honest, an indie press and self-publishing, there's not a huge amount of difference between the two, especially if you kind of know what you're doing. So when it comes to my books, I work with a cover designer. The cover to this was designed by Larch Gallagher. I also work with an editor, Pamelise Harris. Shout out to Pam. Pam's worked on at least a half dozen books for me now and more to come. And then I work with layout specialists and that kind of stuff to get it turned into ebooks and all that kind of stuff. And then promote it on my own Steam, pretty much. This is beautiful. Oh, I like this. I'm running a thunderclap to get the word out about this on launch day, so please check the link below and give that a pledge. Basically, it's like Kickstarter for social sharing. So if 100 people authorize thunderclap to post an update on launch day, those updates will all get pushed out and basically I'll get a load of exposure. This launches on Saturday the 27th of January 2018. So yeah, this is my new book coming out soon, Driven, Lightfold Book One. It's the first book in a series. They're kind of cozy detectives, but with a modern technological twist. Don't know if you got that from the blurb. If you guys on booktube if you're interested in reading and reviewing a copy of this let me know and i'll figure something out whether you want an e-copy or a physical copy we'll sort of something I, I you know i put money into marketing and stuff so i'm quite happy to ship copies internationally and stuff especially for people whose channels i enjoy watching so let me know with a comment if this sounds interesting and uh, we'll figure something out i will end this uh, video by just reading chapter one this kind of sets the scene and introduces the victim that kicks off the whole investigation Chapter 1. Donna takes a walk. Donna Thompson turned the volume up on her iPhone, tightened her scarf and started to walk a little faster. It was a Tuesday, and Tuesdays were the worst day for tips. Tony's had been empty all day. It was also the night time. After cashing up and waving goodbye to Tony, the eponymous boss who'd sunk his life savings into the place, she'd walked out of the cafe and started out on the long journey home. She lit a cigarette, looked both ways and crossed the road. The street lights shone down and made monsters in the shadows. She tugged nervously at a lock of her hair. Her fringe hung down to her eyes. Her face itched with the concealer that helped to hide the bags that grew when she worked too many late shifts. The deception was completed by layers of eyeshadow and mascara and a thin line of eyeliner that made her look like a faux Egyptian pharaoh queen. Meanwhile, the cold air chafed at her lips, accentuating their pink tint and wearing away at her Carmex. She finished her cigarette and threw it into the gutter, then reapplied her lip balm without breaking her stride. It was a 20 minute walk to the station. While her boots kept her warm and dry, the soles of her feet were perpetually blistered from walking across the cafe's tiled floor. A black cab motored past her. Donna thought about flagging it down but ignored the urge. She barely had enough to live on as it was, and luxuries were for other people. Besides, she knew she looked pretty good. A blue-eyed brunette with a reddish tinge and a hanging fringe, a size 10 dress and decent legs that were covered with a thick pair of grey leggings. She wasn't a classical beauty, but she thought she could pass for a 7 or an 8 if the lighting was good, and anything could happen in a sketchy area like this one. Like her mother had always told her, there were some bad people out there, and some of those people drove taxis. It was a cold, quiet night, too cold to stand around in, with hardly any traffic and no other pedestrians in sight. Donna shivered and thrust her hands into her pockets, then continued to walk along the deserted street. 
It started to rain, and Donna realised just how impractical her clothes were. She was still a quarter mile from the station, and she had to walk back to her apartment when she reached her stop. She shivered as the rain started to gather momentum. She thought about waiting it out and decided against it. Better to press on, surely. At least that way she'd be able to dry off when she got home. The water had started to soak through her clothes and into her bones, and her hair was already tangled and matted, a far cry from the comfortable bun she tied it in when she left the house that morning. Her phone rang. With the water still pelting down and tearing at her eyes like a harpy, she willed herself to forget it. But a FOMO was kicking in and the law of the vibrating device was too much to ignore, so she crouched in a narrow archway outside a house on Wentworth Road and pulled it out of her pocket to glance at the screen. It was an unknown number and it caught her at a bad time, so she ignored it and packed her phone back away in her pocket. Instead, she stepped back out into the rain and hit a right at the traffic lights. She didn't notice the black sedan that was inching slowly along the road, a good hundred yards or so behind her. Donna walked along in a world of her own, mindlessly thinking about the hum of the wind in her ears, the smell of fresh rain in the middle of winter and the slick sound of tyres on grit. She reached a T-junction and looked to her left and then her right. Then she froze, illuminated by headlights. The black sedan had skidded off course and was heading towards the pavement. By the time she realised what was happening, it was already too late. Donna tried to dodge out of the way, but the vehicle clipped her side and sent her tumbling through the air. She died the second her head hit the asphalt. That is chapter one of Driven by Dane Cobain. Lightfall book one coming soon. Details in the box below. And obviously I will let you know more about it in future videos. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, hit subscribe, hit a like. You know the drill by now. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for Driven coming 2018.